Hi, I'm Jody, and we just started our LPIC course. And we were creating our lab. For that one, we installed a Fedora system on the previous video, and now I'm going to install an Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a very, very popular desktop system, so it's my choice if I want to show you a Debian-based system. Again, when you go to the download page, we will go for Ubuntu Desktop, which includes the desktop environment. As you saw on Fedora in previous session, we installed the KDE. Here, I won't choose anything specific, so it will be GNOME, because the default desktop on, it's like this. Because the de default desktop for Ubuntu is GNOME. You have two choices. It has version 20.4.04, fourth month of the year 2020 or you have a newer version which is called 2110 the reason that this is highlighted is because it's a lts version long time support version so if you install this you will need less upgrades tell you what i went for 2020.4 which is still in beta but there is a reason I chose these beta systems because recording this will take a little bit longer for sure. There are lots and lots and lots of sessions to be recorded. So I didn't want you to see, ah, oh, this is the old version. Trick. <laughs> and again, there are, if you go to the download page of most Linuxes, you have different options, x86-64 or AMD. 64 are for Intel and Intel compatible processors like AMD. And if you have this or you have ARM, it's for ARM architecture. It can have a 64 or not. These are for ARM processors like Mac M ones. So choose wisely. In most of the cases, if you have a non-Mac M1 computer, you will need these. I downloaded them in my Windows machine. Here, I created a, create a new one. If you are using UTM, the process will be same. You will create a new one, you will give it an ISO, and you will run the system. Here, I will say I have uh, Ubuntu 22. Next. How much RAM? I will give it four gigabytes. You can give it two gigabytes or whatever. The more, the better. And these are the disks. Disks, everything is normal. Dynamic allocation. So when I'm giving it, for example, 20 gigabytes of hard disk, it won't dedicate 20 gigabytes of my hard disk for this machine. It will give it a small amount and will increase gradually. Now the machine is ready. I will go to the settings. One thing I always say, change is display. I will give it more display. And everything else is as default. Here, these are the storage. On this uh, CD drive, I will connect a ISO file here. I will say, come here. I have an ISO file here. Use this as the CD drive. If you are installing on an actual machine, when after downloading the ISO, you need to write it to a CD, old school, or to a USB drive. There are different programs which do this for you. You will find lots and lots of uh, manuals, manual tutorials on how to do this. Even there are softwares which do this directly for you for example burn a dvd on ubuntu os install guides for the ubuntu desktop and lots of other things anyway i connected my iso to this cd drive so now i have a computer with an empty disk and an iso in its drive so if i run it it will run it will start from the disk from the i mean cd drive pseudo cd Say OK, Ubuntu. I will maximize the window. Again, it will start. 
I will say I want to install it. We'll give it some minor information, small information like my name, region, and this kind of stuff, and done. CDs are starting. These are live CDs, so it will start. The OS is working, and you can install it. In case of Ubuntu, they have decided to give you a choice in the beginning. You want to install or you want to go and use this as a live disk. Install Ubuntu in English. Keyboard is English. As you see, it is not maximized like Fedora did. This is because we have to install some drivers for the virtual box. They decided not to include it out of the box. But I will show this in another video because I don't want to mix things up. Here we are just installing it. Normal installation. When I'm saying normal installation, it means it will install web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media players. If I go with minimal, this will be it. If you have chosen to, for example, install the server, it won't have a graphical interface. It says, what I need to do with the hard disk. I say, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Remember, we are in a virtual mach machine. This is a virtual disk, so there is no danger. It is... It's seeing the disk. Let me do this. Next, as you saw, next, 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 next. Your name. My name is Jody. This machine is going to be called LPIC Jody. Pick a username Jody. Password is 123. It is short. I know. Okay. Done. We are in a virtual machine. So this is my window which works as a separate computer and I have one file on my hard disk this is one file which works as the hard disk of this machine so when I say erase everything and install Ubuntu it is just erasing inside of this file on my hard disk in my computer it is safe if you are installing it as a uh, double uh, dual boot or on a real machine, you have to take more care on what you are doing. You have to pay more attention. It's more correct. Correct. -er, more correct. More correct. Okay. Anyway, so if you're installing on a real machine, pay more attention and see what you are doing. But when you are installing on a virtual machine, it is very safe. During this course, we will speak more about these disks, partitions, and everything. Bear with me. Okay, let it install. It is installing the system. I was reading a book about the introduction to the algorithm. If you want to be a, a competitive programmer, and the quote in the back it says, those who can imagine anything can create the impossible. Alan Turing. Okay, let's wait and see what will happen. Is going fast and meanwhile you can look at these pages and slides and see that this is a super amazing system linux has video player linux has a what else video player what else do you want ah it has chromium a browser firefox it has thunderbird it's a super nice system <laughs> I'm a fan of Linux. Okay, it's preparing everything. It's telling you what it does. As I told you, the problem is it's the screen is small. We need to install some packages to let VirtualBox to show a better resolution. 
but I will show it in a side video, not in this one, because I make I want to make this quick. And it says it's finished. Do you want to restart? Yes, please restart. It automatically ejects the CD drive, I think. Let's see. It says remove the CD drive and press enter. We did it. And it will restart automatically. The idea is you've installed it, you want to reinstall it. You have want to reboot it. I said reinstall? No, I was wrong. It will automatically reboot. Some people don't like Ubuntu because it's too normal. Don't be like them. It's the important part is what you do with your system. It's like saying, I don't want laptops, laptops are super normal. I want a cyber deck. I love cyber decks. Anyway, <laughs> Jody123, and we are logged in. This is the GNOME uh, desktop environment. We will talk about them more, but you can see some differences. It's a customized GNOME, very customized GNOME. Do you want to connect your online accounts? No. Do you want to help Ubuntu? Yes. Ubuntu is a better pronunciation, I think. Your privacy is important for us. Thank you. And we are done. This is your environment. We will fix the resolution later. But you can go here, type terminal, and run terminal. And you are connected to the internet. So we just installed our Ubuntu for our lab. Let's start our journey into Elpik. I think the first part is very advanced, but no worries. We will succeed. Be with me, I was Jadi, and we are doing a free for all Elpik videos and booklet. Yes. You can see it at Linux first 